The pass rates for the CISSP exam are not publicly released, so anybody that says they know that number is probably making an educated guess. But I think it is pretty widely accepted that a significant percentage do not pass on their first attempt. But simply by looking at the questions that I receive most often, I can identify those areas where people struggle the most. And I think the answers may surprise you. So today, I want to ensure you can count yourself in that group that passes on their first try. So I'll reveal the seven areas candidates most often report they struggle with and how you can quickly close any knowledge gaps ahead of exam day. And if you stick around to the end, I'll share the number one absolute single most important concept you need to focus on to ensure you're ready on game day. I had a bit of trouble choosing a name for this session because these seven areas are certainly among the most challenging areas on the CISSP exam. Uh, there are seven areas that require quite a lot of memorization work or practice. They are seven areas I think are most often overlooked or underestimated by candidates and they are certainly seven areas where I receive quite a number of questions from candidates. But fortunately, there are seven areas where I have targeted solutions to help you quickly get your arms around these so you are ready to go on exam day. I do expect you're going to take quite a few practice quizzes as you prepare for the exam. I do have a 50 question quiz link for you in the video description. No login required, just go take that and assess your readiness with my compliments. I do recommend everyone get the 2021 edition of the CISSP exam study guide and practice test bundle. I have a link in the video description. There are hundreds of flashcards, hundreds of practice questions, and they fit right in to my recommended exam prep strategy, which is included in my CISSP video series. So let's start with area number one, which is risk analysis formulas. So the formulas for risk analysis are actually mathematical in nature, and the exam will test your knowledge not only of the formula definitions, but also their use. So you need to know how to use these formulas and apply them to a problem. And some of these formulas depend on answers from other formulas. But bottom line, you need to know how to use these formulas for the exam. So you need, you need a bit of practice. And I did find in the study materials as I was preparing, I found a fair number of explanations of the formulas. But I, I did find that I was lacking a lot of practical application of these formulas. So I created a video on quantitative risk analysis, just the formulas where I walk you through a real world example. It's only about 20 minutes long, but it shows you these formulas in action, which is exactly what you need as you prepare for the exam. Area number two, cryptography. So with cryptography, I remember over-preparing for this area, uh, honestly. So it may the, the exam may test your knowledge of algorithms, the, the types, their use, uh, key lengths are mentioned. Uh, the algorithm types, I think, are more important than the key lengths. So understanding uh, symmetric cryptography from asymmetric cryptography and understanding how the algorithms are used is important. Why do you ask? Well, if you understand how the algorithms are used, you can eliminate potential answers as you're reviewing exam questions. So if I see a question that mentions something about bulk encryption, uh, I immediately know that it's a symmetric algorithm that I'm looking for in my answer. And if I understand the algorithms which are symmetric, which are asymmetric, it's going to allow me to eliminate some distractors. And Quantum may appear on the CISSP 2021 update. So fortunately, I've created a targeted session for you here. It's the cryptography drill down. It's about 30, 35 minutes long. And I cover post-quantum cryptography in that session and drill down to what I expect will be potential answers that may come up on the exam. So post-quantum cryptography refers to cryptographic algorithms that are thought to be secure against a crypt analytic attack by a quantum computer. But anyway, this video has a section on quantum and drills down to what I think is most relevant to you for the exam. So area number three is laws and regulations. And, and the exam doesn't expect you to be a lawyer, but it does expect that you'll have high-level knowledge of laws affecting privacy. And it largely focuses on U.S. laws, and that's not a surprise because this exam was developed 
by an organization here in the U.S., although uh, I would say there are CISSP certification holders around the world for sure. I would expect that GDPR may be covered on the exam, and that's not a U.S. law, but it is a law that affects U.S. companies who have customers in the European Union. And I would say this topic generally changes a little more slowly than most others, simply because laws tend to change a little less frequently than technology. But again, high-level knowledge is key here. You're not expected to be a lawyer. And, and I have a session on laws and regulations. It's about half an hour long, and it really drills down in a fashion to help you differentiate the key elements of these laws so you can eliminate distractors as you're trying to choose the right answer on the exam. So area number four, models and processes. So with models and processes, you're going to find processes and frameworks across all eight domains, from security models to software development models to threat modeling to information lifecycle. It's important to know the high-level process steps, and it's important to know the purpose and use of the various processes. So where they're used can help you eliminate distractors very easily. I like to use mnemonic devices or memory devices, you might call them, to ease the task of memorization here, basically creating uh, acronyms to help memorize those steps more quickly. I have a video that covers security models, processes, and frameworks across all eight domains. It's nearly an hour long, but there's a lot of material there. It's a lot of memorization, and I tried to drill down in a very targeted fashion to help you there. Area number five is physical security. So you will see it said in the official study guide, there is no security without physical security. The fact of the matter is, if somebody can get into your wiring closet, for example, they can wreak havoc on the network in your environment. If they can get into your server room, the sky's the limit. And I think this is a challenging area because it's not a topic most people encounter in their job. I had one candidate who, who came back after watching this video and said, you know, I've been in, in IT security for 20 years. These were not topics that I encounter in my job day to day. And some will say that it's less important in cloud due to shared responsibility. I would counter that by saying that most enterprises today are still hybrid. Uh, and even when most organizations are nearly pure public cloud, you still have an aspect of site design, which, which comes up in the skills measured for this exam. So physical security still matters in 2021. But the exam focuses on site design, addressing certain types of threats, and as well as understanding the types of controls. And I have a targeted 40 minutes for you on physical security principles and controls, I think will ensure that you're ready for that on game day. All right, so moving on to area number six, cyber attacks. So in the area of cyber attacks, attacks and types evolve. So expect new attacks on the exam in 2021. But you should also know the attack countermeasures. So what countermeasures are effective, uh, broadly speaking, against certain types of attacks? And you want to focus on the key features unique to an attack. So you can pick one out from another on the exam. It doesn't mean you need to know how to execute one of these attacks, but you need to understand key characteristics. So, so what makes a distributed denial of service attack, a distributed denial of service attack, for example. But knowing how to prevent common attacks, I think, is very, very important. And I have a targeted almost one hour session on attacks and countermeasures, including quite a few new attacks that are expected to appear in the 2021 update to the CISSP exam. All right, so I want to take a sidebar here, and I want to talk about 2021 exam updates. This is not area number seven. I told you uh, number seven. I was going to save the most important for last, and I am, but I want to talk to you about preparing for 2021. Maybe you've been preparing, and now we're past May 1st, 2021, so you know that the exam's been updated, and you're wondering, does my, my 2018 you know, exam preparation just go out the window if you were preparing for, for pre-May 2021. And the reality is the 2021 exam updates are incremental in nature. So you don't have to throw, throw out your existing exam prep. 
the 2018 prep materials are still very useful, but you need to know which topics are new in the 2021 exam. That's going to be important. And there are many sources out there that will incorrectly cite topics as new. What I, what I found was that there were quite a few sources that correctly call out new topics, but they also call out some topics as new, which are actually just subjects that found their way into the exam outline. So they're explicitly mentioned where they weren't explicitly mentioned before. That might mean they're more important, but it doesn't necessarily mean they were new because they certainly showed up in the, uh, the 2018 revision material. So in terms of the 2021 exam update, uh, what you'll notice is that the eight domains of the CISSP are the same. There was just a couple of minor changes in terms of the percentage weighting of uh, these domains. And it's very minor, as you can see, there are a percent here and there. So again, changes are incremental in nature. So I have a session for you. It's about an hour and a half that drills into 2021 exam topics to ensure you're ready for the latest revision. So I said I was saving the most important for last, and indeed I did. It's the CISSP mindset. Well, what do I mean by that? You're going to hear folks say, think like a manager is a key concept to master for this exam. So understanding how to apply security leadership thinking is going to be key in passing this exam. It's going to help you eliminate distractors to get to that right answer. You want to answer the questions from the view of a, of a chief information security officer, not a security analyst. And due care versus due diligence is actually a key concept. If you understood nothing about the mindset other than due care versus due diligence, it's going to help you go, get a long way toward picking the right answer for the exam. So I found lots of material out there that touch on this in, in vague fashion. I created a video that quantifies this CISSP mindset thinking. It's about 35 minutes long, but I actually walk you through the concepts and then I walk you through a couple of questions, a couple of sample uh, practice questions and show you how to apply that thinking in a real world scenario on exam day. So again, if you watch nothing else that I've put out in terms of exam prep material, watch this video. I, I promise you won't be sorry. I've had multiple students come back and say, you know, this was the most important video I watched before I walked in on exam day. I had one student mention that who actually took an expensive one week boot camp. So, so I know this video is going to be very helpful to you. I also wanted to point out I have an 18 video CISSP exam cram series out there. If you're not already familiar, check it out. I've got core sessions for domains one through eight, plus the 2021 update, plus eight more supplemental sessions, largely what I've been describing to you here, that will ensure you are ready on exam day. And, and really, I don't waste words. I try to drill down on everything in a very targeted fashion. So that is it for the seven most challenging areas. I hope you're getting value out of the series. If this is your first video, definitely go check out the playlist. Reach out to me anytime with questions as you prepare, either through uh, the comments section of the videos or connect with me on LinkedIn and let's have a chat. And I wish you the best of luck on the exam. And until next time, take care and stay safe.